Okay, so we are giving away a scholarship. I am so excited about this. Tell your auntie, tell your cousin, tell your mama then, tell your guidance counselors at the high school. Talk to your science teachers. If you are like in an organization, a Greek organization, an organization at the school, scholarship, the link to it is right here on the screen. It's also in the description field. We need to give away this money. So this is the first one of its kind. Curly Hair Crisis is giving away $5,000 to any individual that is an undergraduate in college. Let us help you with some coinage. Or if you are a senior graduating this year and you're trying to go to school for science, anything that has to do with cosmetic chemistry, biochemistry, anthropology, botanicals, herbalism, I don't care what it is. If you're trying to do some type of scientific research and you want to impact the beauty industry, hair, skin, nails, whatever it is, I'm going to need you to go to this link, send in your stuff so you could possibly get this money. I am so excited about this. I'm trying to make it so the curly hair crisis can actually fund someone's entire academic journey. But we got to start somewhere. Now, let me tell you how we got to this, y'all. So you know that I like to bring you experts in the field. I'm real big on science myself. I'm real big on the question why. You know, why is our hair like this? Why are the products doing what they do? And right now, you know, I, I just washed my hair, so I'm faking. Like, this is what it looks like. But you know, I only, it's only a matter of time before it poofs up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so how we got here was I absolutely understand that on YouTube and t hair talk, what they call it, and Instagram, Facebook, you can find hair tutorials. You can find people doing product reviews. Like it's not hard to find folks that are doing things with natural hair. What I'm trying to bring you is a little different. I want to bring you these experts that have knowledge about why our hair does what it does. Hence, talking to people like Pam. Pamela Farrow or talking to a lot of trichologists. I'm trying to bring you this dermatologist, y'all. She works with pediatrics and she sees a lot with children's hair. Also, like people who um, study anthropology, they can tell you like how our skin colors are different shades. Our hair is different textures based on the origin we came from. I love that type of stuff and it really helps us to understand ourselves and give us a little bit pr more pride. Give us a little bit more pride in these curls. But that being said, listen, so when I was out looking for folk that, you know, might have textured hair and that are also in the scientific research realm, it is so difficult. It is not as easy as I thought it was going to be because we just ain't out there. They just recently had a textured hair and scalp symposium. It's a big deal. It's where all these researchers come. They present papers, things that they've studied. They were studying things about our scalp. Do you know little bacteria lives on our scalp and some of the hair products we use is killing it and this is the good bacteria that's helping our hair grow? I ain't never heard nobody talk about that and I'm ready to bring you a researcher. However, that researcher just might be one of our Caucasian brothers and sisters because again, we're just maybe not in that industry. There were some scientists researching the frequency of hair washing if you had textured hair. Now, the scientists that were studying that don't have textured hair. Their hair is line hair. It's straight hair, but that's okay. That's fine because there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that, wow, it, I just think that if we had more representation in that field, you would bring a different perspective to the study because listen, when I looked it up and I saw that for cosmetic chemistry, and big shouts out to, I think her name is April. And I'm going to get your name wrong, but boo, I'm going to put you right here on the screen. Big shouts out to you talking about cosmetic chemistry and that's kitchen chemist <laughs> like myself. Um, and big shouts out to the beauty chemist herself that really helped us understand the chemistry behind our hair care products. Big shouts out to you, girl, because for real, when I looked it up, if you identify black or uh, African-American, we're only making up about, I think it was 8% of the cosmetic chemistry industry. We're just not there. <laughs> We're just not there. And then if you look up scientific researchers, we even drop a little lower. We make about 6% of all of the scientific researchers in the U.S. And I'm like, mm, the devil is a lie because at Curly Hair Crisis, what I'm trying to do is grow the line. I definitely want to just help in this area. So I'm trying to figure out why we are so lowly represented. And let me just show you this clip from um, Tracy Ellis Ross. Every time I see her, I'll be like, ain't no mountain high enough. She might be upset about that because that's her mama. Well, she was on that show. It was like black people, black is blacker, black, black power. It was, Lord, what was it? She was so good on it. She like, she like my friend. 
in my head because I just feel like I could have a regular conversation with her. She won't judge me. We just two girls from the block. I feel you, girl. She's probably like, girl, stop. <laughs> All that. There's a clip where she's talking about her experience with the chemist when she was making her product line. Take a look at this. There isn't enough data to support proper growth of those brands. What I discovered working in person and one-on-one -on -one with the chemist is that the efficacy of products is actually based on what straight blonde hair does. I would give feedback and they would be like, well, we need to know what the hair was like when it was dry. And I was like, that has nothing to do with knowing if a product is gonna make your hair have good curls. <laughs> the clumping, the slip, hydration that your hair gets, those three things were terms that these chemists had never heard of. And so if they didn't know what those things were, there was no way to translate the information I needed. And so the chemist process was a really interesting one for me. Um, I, it was part of my vision and my goal to really have a table at Pattern that was women of color, people of color. So much um, time is um, alleviated because the communication is already there. The diversity, equity, and inclusion needs to happen on all levels. There's like a lot that is not happening. It's on the retail floor in terms of the salespeople. It's up in the executive suites. It's creating a pipeline, making sure that people have an opportunity to move up in their careers and jobs. It's making sure that the equity is there to actually share the space. There's a lot of work to be done but the soil is very fertile right now. I absolutely love that video. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put the link to this article that, to this article that highlighted all these titans in the industry. I got it right here on my computer, so I won't mess up. Cause y'all know I just be talking and sometimes I might slip and I might have to edit out what I said cause it was t completely incorrect. <laughs> That was funny to me. We know that black brands make a very small percentage, about 2.5% of the entire industry. We know that. We know that the executives in which this article highlighted several executives in their story. You should watch it because one girl had me crying because she was talking about the struggles to get your products in the store. And I was like, oh, that girl's daughter lady was starting in her kitchen. I was like, girl, me and my bestie started and my bestie can't stay in my life. Because everything smells like fenugreek, but that's okay, girl, because we gonna make it. She gonna see. We gonna see. <laughs> I just really want to help with closing the gap. I need you to share this out to anyone in academia, anyone you know that might be interested. If I need to go out and go into some of these labs in L'Oreal or Johnson & Johnson or wherever they do the work, wherever they do the research, if I need to go talk to more researchers, which I'm trying to get in contact with these people, even the people at the NIH or people that work at these huge companies where they do a lot of formulations, people that study our hair in a, in a different way, like epidemiologists studying why so many children in one area are all experiencing hair loss. Well, they happen to live Live next to a toxic waste dump that was you know things like that i just really want to bring to y'all so we can just learn more it's so interesting and it's so helpful and i am so excited that we have the opportunity at curly hair crisis to actually start <laughs> with a scholarship this year it's open now because let me tell you something this life is short i mean i'm not gonna be here forever but if the good lord give me a platform where i'll finally make into these billions where these you know companies are making i want to repackage that money and give it back you know what i'm saying so when i get to the gates he'd be like what did you do i'd be like well hold on um if you just look at my books over here with the curly hair crisis you can see that we <laughs> Good Lord, that we um, helped a few people on their way. We was able to pay. Yes, Jesus. Was there anything else that you wanted me to or you wanted me to give back to communities? I, I did that. Let me turn the book. I just really want to encourage and motivate people that they can do. If there aren't any products that you feel like you want to order <laughs> to go towards the scholarship, that's okay because you could just press that contribute button and that 5000 is going to grow based on what you contribute to the scholarship. So all that to say, thank you so much. I hope that you share this with anyone, anyone you could think of. Like I said, my Greeks, 
my HBCU. I mean, all to the organizations that help out the youth. Those of you who are already in school and you know you you use a little piece of change. Because I am looking out here and our percentage in this area is very low when it comes to the beauty industry and research. But we can do something about that if we expose more of the next generation to the possibilities. I know you know a kid that's curious, always asking questions, ready to understand something. You you might even be in a situation where you just got your grades where they need to be. Mm-hmm. They just hit, they hit that two nine, they just hit that three because you weren't focused, but you absolutely love science. You actually, you actually want to do something that's helpful to folks. And I want to help you do the scholarship. We plan to give that award sometime in May, April, boo. So I see you there. Share, 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 and share. Thank you so much for supporting Curly Hair Crisis.